Welcome AP Physics 1. We are going to begin our advanced placement test review, starting with the very first unit, which is kinematics and projectile motion. So let us review first the fundamental kinematic equations. Let's start off with a constant velocity model. The constant velocity model is when you have something that is moving at a consistent velocity, and you can take the displacement that it went and divide by the time it took to make that displacement. And you can only use this formula if something's moving at a constant velocity, meaning that in a motion map, the space between the object's positions are evenly spaced. However, the majority of the things we learn in this class are actually part of the uniform acceleration model. And that's when things are changing how fast they go. And that's called acceleration. When I change my velocity and divide that by the time it takes to make that change. You can find something's change of velocity by subtracting its final minus initial. There are two other formulas that you can use on the AP Physics 1 formula chart if you have uniformly accelerating motion. However, you should know that there's a fourth equation that you can use, but you must memorize it. And in a uniform acceleration model, an object is not going at a consistent rate. It's either getting faster and faster or slower and slower. So imagine the ball is moving to the right and I shine a strobe light on it every second that goes by. As you can see, every second that goes by, it can travel more and more distance. And the only reason why it's doing that is because it's getting faster and faster. So let's do a quick thing about free body diagrams, because we're going to talk mainly today about projectiles. So let's say I kick a football in midair. And the dotted purple line tells you the direction that the football is currently going. The question is, what is the correct free body diagram? A free body diagram is a diagram that shows you the real forces acting on the object. So is it A, B, C, or D? Which one is the correct free body diagram for something in midair? The correct answer is B. And that might be confusing to you, but actually, if you think about it, there's really only one force acting on the football if it's in midair. You see the foot is no longer touching it. And I didn't attach rockets to it. The only force acting on it is the weight of the football. Okay, so then that leads us into our next thing. If the only force acting on a projectile is gravity, what does its motion look like? Well, let's start off with the horizontal motion. Let's say I shoot a cannonball straight ahead and pretend that there's no gravity. If there's no gravity, the cannonball is just going to move to the right at a constant velocity forever and ever. And I know this because of Newton's first law, which says that an object of motion stays in motion at a constant velocity if there's no force acting on it. And since there is no force acting on the projectile in the horizontal motion, I can use a constant velocity formula to describe anything on the x-axis. Similarly, I can analyze the y-axis motion. Now let's say I take that cannonball and I just drop it there. As you can see, the cannonball gets faster and faster. That's because there's a force on it. And that force is gravity, and therefore we consider all the motion on the y-axis to be an accelerated model. And this relates to Newton's second law, which says that an unbalanced force, in this case that's the weight of the cannonball, will change an object's velocity. And therefore I can use the fundamental uniformly accelerated motion model equations. So a projectile motion therefore will create a parabola. It has a polynomial on the y-axis and a linear function on the x-axis. Here is a projectile shot from the ground at an angle. Now notice the vectors. The x-vector at any point never changes. 
That's because of inertia. But if you look at the vertical vectors, it starts off fast going up and then slows down. And then when it reaches its highest point, that vertical velocity is zero. And gravity is going to speed it up back down to the ground. Notice that the velocities of the impact with the ground are the same exact velocities of the chute at the beginning, just going in the opposite direction vertically. Let's get our terminology correct. So first of all, the trajectory is the shape of the parabolic curve. The apex is a fancy way of saying the peak or the highest point. And once again, the highest point happens when the vertical velocity equals zero. And that makes sense. If it's no longer going up vertically and can't go any higher vertically, that must therefore be the highest point. And that highest point is called the height of the projectile motion. And the next vocabulary word is going to be a little bit strange because it's kind of the opposite of what they taught you in algebra class. You see, we like to talk about the range of motion of a projectile, and that's capital X. Now, in your normal algebra class or calculus class, that's called domain. But in physics, they call it the range. I guess it's the more commonly used word. So those are the vocabulary words for a projectile motion. We're going to solve Let's do a quick example question. This type of question you would have seen in previous physics classes, whether it be your regulars physics or your pre-AP physics. This is a cannon that's shooting a cannonball from an 800 meter tall cliff with a velocity of 50 meters per second. Here's my drawing of that scenario. The question A is what time it will take before it hits the ground. And what's the range, which is basically the domain of the cannonball. I define my positive y as down, my positive x to the right. And the reason why I do those positive directions is because my entire motion will be positive if I define it that way. And it's a lot easier to deal with positive numbers. Draw a line down the center of your page. And on the left side of the line, you're going to put everything that has to do with the y-axis. And on the right side, everything that has to do with the x-axis. And nothing will ever cross from the left side to the right side. Because what happens on the y-axis stays on the y-axis, and what happens on the x-axis stays on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have gravity, free fall, and therefore we have acceleration. So there could be any one of these five givens. Well, let's go to the question. The first number is 800 meters, and that's how tall it is. And tall is a vertical description. Therefore, my delta y is 800 meters. The displacement of the cannonball vertically will be 800 meters below where it started. The question asking for the time. Now, the question, though, I'm about to ask you is where do I put the 50 meters per second? Well, it's definitely not going to go on the left side because the left side is a vertical number. But if you look at the picture, the 50 meters per second is going to the right. So that given is going to go on that side. Now, this is where students get stuck. They might say to themselves, hey, they didn't give me any numbers. I'm stuck. I don't know how to do all these numbers now. Well, you have to apply some logic. So vertically, what is acceleration? Well, it's gravity. And gravity is down, and down is positive. And it's like I'm dropping the cannonball because I'm shooting it from its highest point. This is a projectile that is shot from the apex, and therefore the initial vertical velocity is zero. And I don't know the final, so I'm just going to add a question mark. So now I only know three things, A, initial velocity, and displacement. Which equation can I use to solve for time? Well, the only equation that I can use is that which has all four things. The three things that I know and the one thing that I want to know. I start plugging in the numbers. First of all, I notice that the initial velocity is zero. It's like plugging in a zero and multiplying it by t. Hey, that cancels out. So my equation is a lot simpler because there is really no initial velocity. I'm going to solve for time because that's what I'm looking for. I multiply two on both sides. I divide by gravity. And then I take a square root. And that's my final answer, but I'm going to plug in the numbers. 
and I'm going to get a final answer of 12.6 seconds. Now that's the only number that's allowed to go to the right side because dropping the ball and shooting the ball is the same thing because what happens on the x-axis has no effect on what's going on on the y-axis. And since time is a scalar and scalars have no direction, he can transfer to the other side. And here's how. So on the horizontal, I have constant velocity. I'm solving for the range, which is the delta x, or how far it goes horizontally. And it's going 50 meters per second, and the ball will be in the air for 12.6 seconds. So I multiply those numbers, the seconds cancel out, and I get 630 meters for the displacement on x. Okay, what happens when I shoot a projectile at an angle? For instance, we have Steven over here, who's gonna kick a soccer ball with the velocity at an angle. So I'm going to define up as positive and right as positive. Okay, so Steven kicking the ball at an angle, I'm gonna draw a vector that represents the velocity. And if you think about how you would describe that vector to a blind person, you would say, hey, the velocity is both up and to the right. So that's why I'm gonna find how much right it's going and how much up it's going. And those two vectors that I drew in dotted lines are called the vector components. It, those two vectors are equivalent to the yellow vector. And the angle 60 degrees is defined from the horizontal. In your pre-calculus class and your geometry class, you have learned SOKATOA, or SOKATO, or whatever way you learned it, which are the trigonometric functions that tell us about triangles. And as you can see there, we have a pretty well-defined right triangle. Plugging in the vector components and the hypotenuse, which is the velocity, I get three expressions here that I can use. Now, with a projectile motion, I'm interested most in the horizontal motion and the vertical motion. So I'm gonna solve for the vector components using a little bit of algebra. Note tangent's kind of the odd guy out. You really only use tangents whenever you're looking for an angle. This is 90% of the time. So let's proceed to answer the questions. Question A is how much time will it take to hit the ground? And B is what is the range of the soccer ball? Okay, well, let me plug in the numbers from the question. Uh, the hypotenuse is 34.7 meters per second. And multiplying that by sine of 60 and cosine of 60, I get my two vector components. My initial vertical will be 30 meters per second. And my velocity on the horizontal, which is not initial but constant, is 17.4 meters per second. Now, the soccer ball is going to be thrown into the air. I'm actually going to teach you how to approach this problem without using algebra, just using common sense. So we know that for the very first split second, the initial velocity going up is 30 meters per second, and the horizontal is 17.4 meters per second. Now, let's review what gravity is. Everyone knows in this class, that gravity is very close to 10 meters per second squared. But not a lot of people understand the implication behind that. What does that mean? Well, a second squared is a little bit of an abstract concept, so we're gonna split it up like this. Think of it as 10 meters per second for every second that goes by. What does that mean? So for gravity, acceleration, it will be in the downward direction. And every second that goes by, gravity is either making an object get faster 10 meters per second for every second that goes by, or it's making it go slower 10 meters per second per second. So now look at our projectile path. A second later, I know that gravity is gonna try to slow down the soccer ball. And one second is what it takes for it to get to 20. Now, horizontally, there's no change. The horizontal motion has no effect. Gravity does not affect things on the horizontal. 
Okay, and then I know one second later, gravity is going to slow it down to be 10 meters per second with no change on the horizontal. And therefore, I can conclude that it takes three seconds for the projectile to get to the top of its peak. It's still moving to the right, and it's still accelerating because now gravity is going to speed it up toward the ground. And now I have negative 10 meters per second. Notice that I didn't write the negative sign because drawing the arrow down implied the negativity. It's still moving to the right, but now it's going 20 meters per second and moving to the right. And then when it hits the ground, it's going to impact vertically with a speed of 30 and horizontally with a speed of 17.4. And if I were to do Pythagorean's theorem, I would find that the impact velocity is going to be 34.7 and it's hitting at an angle of 60, meaning that the way it was launched is exactly the way that it hits the ground, just in the opposite direction. So I've answered both questions, actually, because uh, part A is six seconds, because I know it takes three seconds for it to get to its top. I double that number, and that's how much time it takes to get to the ground. And as far as how far it goes, the range, well, I'm going to multiply its horizontal velocity by six seconds to get 104 meters. Okay, we're almost up on 20 minutes here, so let's just do one more projectile problem that is a partial parabola, and the emphasis for this slide is to show y'all how to deal with displacement correctly. So Larry's at Top Golf, and he puts down his golf club, and he's going to throw a ball up into the air, and the balcony that he's on is 25 meters off the ground, and the velocity in which he throws it is 40 meters per second vertically. The question has nothing to do with anything horizontal, okay? So we're ignoring any horizontal motion for the sake of this question, okay? I'm going to define positive as up and right as positive x. And since the motion started at the top of the balcony, I'm going to call that level my zero. So I'm calling where Larry stands the ground, so to say. And anything above that line will be a positive displacement. And anything below that line will be a negative displacement. Now, it's a vertical motion, so therefore gravity is acting on it. So I need to find my variables and my givens. Well, the golf ball started at zero, and it ended up 25 meters below zero. So my displacement is negative 25. And the reason why it's negative is because it's below the line. Now. I want to know what time it's going to take. That's not what the question is asking, but I don't know the answer to it, so I'm just going to put a question mark there. Now, unlike the cannon from two questions ago, uh, the initial velocity is not zero. I mean, he's actually throwing it at the split second that it leaves his hand. But it's going upward, so I'm going to give it a positive 40 meters per second. Downward velocity, well, that's what I'm looking for. The final velocity is my unknown. And the acceleration is negative gravity. Okay, I'm not going to go through the process of picking the equation uh, with you, but this is the equation that works because it has everything that we know and the one thing that we want to know. I plug in the numbers. I want you to notice that I plug in the numbers with their negative signs, and I like to use parentheses to make sure those negatives are correct. Gravity is negative and the displacement. And so a negative times a negative is a positive. And so I'm really adding two numbers. And right there is where a lot of people stop and think that's the final answer. They think that Larry is so strong, like he's the Hulk, that he's able to make that golf ball uh, reach a velocity of 2,100 meters per second. But notice the, the units just don't look right. Those units are squared. Well, that's because that's the final answer squared. I need to do a square root to get the correct answer. And that will be either a positive or negative 46. And that's where I have to use context. Obviously, when the golf ball gets to the ground, it's going in the downward direction. And therefore, my final answer is negative 46 meters per second.